What's going on everybody? It's me, DLE Ryan, coming at you with the official DLE new player guide. I want to give a major shout out to our new player helpers in our Discord. If you're not a part of the Discord, make sure to join in because that is where the full written guide is going to be. This is merely a video adaptation uh, of said guide. Now, what this guide, the, the, the main purpose of what we're trying to do with this guide is if you're a brand new player to the game, um, or if you're just brand new to Yu-Gi-Oh! in general and you're just getting into Duel Links, uh, this is supposed to help you from a new player's perspective. So we're taking into account your, you literally have nothing on your account, maybe like a day at most of playtime on there. We're taking into account that uh, you may not be necessarily the greatest player when it comes to uh, to the game, uh, and we're looking into pretty much the, the the main purpose is to what decks for you to buy first, and then what to do with your gems and your money and all that after you've bought your your um, you know your initial decks. Uh, and stuff like that what kind of things should you be looking for in the game when to invest when not to invest uh, scenarios like that uh, before we get started you guys know the drill by now like comment subscribe all that you know only 20 percent of our viewer base is actually subscribed to us oh my lordy we need to get that number up boys hey hit that subscribe button turn on the notifications because if you like content like this um you don't want to miss any follow-up videos and uh you know it also helps us you know like it just it, to be to totally honest to you just liking subscribing commenting it helps us get into the algorithm helps the community grow and um lets us keep doing what we like to do now before we start uh, there's something you kind of have to ask yourself, and that's, are you going to be totally 100% free to play, or are you willing to put a little bit of money into this game? And this guide's going to take on the point of view of both players, probably leading a little bit more on the free-to-play side, as, uh, you know, if you have copious amounts of cash and you can buy anything you want in the game, it doesn't really matter <laughs> what you get, because you can mess up multiple times and you're good to go, um, but... I am still going to take into account new player perspective, uh, free to play, and then uh, if you are willing to spend a little bit of money, I'm talking like 20 bucks a month tops, um, we're going to take that perspective into account as well, and I'll make sure to to identify when I'm talking about free to play or when I'm talking about um, you know, dolphin players, who are calling them. not quite whale players, they're not spending their entire paycheck on Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, but they're willing to spend a, a reasonable amount for a video game that they enjoy, anywhere from 20 to 40 dollars tops i like to do 20 dollars tops uh, when i'm doing videos like this just to be a little bit more conservative uh, with my estimates now when you start this game uh as of the making of this video this is going to be in october 2021 um there are really two decks that i picked out that are viable uh for new players from a perspective of being easy to play while also being cost efficient to actually make um, and I'm going to get into what those two decks are, but I do want to also note that later on in the video, I will uh, show uh, other decks that you can build if you are not interested in the recommended new player decks. So again, these are going to be the recommended ones, and then uh, there's going to be ones that I don't necessarily recommend, but if you're not a big fan of the recommended ones, you can try out those decks as well uh, with some explanation. That's uh, closer to the end of the video. Now, before I get into the two recommended decks that I uh, 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 that I want to give it to you guys, I'm actually going to show you one more deck. It's a completely free deck that you can build uh, as soon as you download the game without spending any of your actual resources. The only resource resources we're going to be spending are these uh, are these normal tickets. Now, the ticket system which when you uh, get them, you get them by logging in, You'll it's very obvious when you get them. When you click on this little uh, icon up here and hit on the exchange tickets up here, you're gonna get the option to actually exchange these tickets in. The one that has the, uh, the little blue eyes on it, this one right here, these are UR and SR Dream Tickets. I don't have any SRs on this account right now, but I have the UR ones. They look the same exact though. They're gold, but have the little blue eyes uh, head on it, the little dragon head. You don't want to use these on the deck that I'm about to show you. These are the ones that you want to save for the uh, 
the other video that I made about the UR and SR Dream Ticket Guide, I heavily recommend going to watch that video in how to spend these tickets because these are very, very, very rare. Uh, currently, for logging into the game, you get two of each, two URs and two SRs, and then they usually give us one every time there's like a major new world or like a major KC event. Or something along those lines but us specifically we're gonna be looking at these normal these UR normals and these SR normals that you see here we're going to be um, we're going to try and uh, uh, spin these to make a deck uh, that you can use until you decide what deck you want to build so this is a deck that you're probably only gonna use for like a day two days a week max in Duel Links. This is not the, 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 the number one deck you're going to go into ranked with, not anything like that. This is the deck that you build up front when you start the game and you have nothing else to your name and you're undecided on what you want to build yet and you haven't finished the guide yet. If, if you, if you want to take more recommendations before you ultimately decide, yes, this is what I'm going to commit for, this is a deck that you can easily have. Again, I want to stress, this is not the deck that you're going to play the game forever with you're gonna maybe use this deck for one two three days maximum and after that you need to decide on what you're gonna spend your resources on and that deck is the dino deck yes you can make a very okay-ish dino deck with pretty much brand new cards this is not this is literally i've downloaded Yu-Gi-Oh! duel links i haven't touched any npc i haven't done anything and you can build this deck uh in order the cards are the blue eyes uh alternative blue eyes white dragon you get that for free as a login reward uh star gazer magician again arc 5 login celebration reward you get it for free giant rex you use your ur ticket not your dream ticket your normal ur ticket these are are basically infinite resources they hand them out like candy um, and you get so many of them so do not be afraid to spend 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 them I personally have let a bunch expire because I've just gotten everything that you could possibly get with these tickets they give them out like crazy so do not bother saving those just spend them right away uh, or you can go get ahead get the the, the giant Rexes um, there's also the time gazer magician again totally free for getting him the destroy SR ticket so again, just totally spend your tickets, doesn't matter. Um, a Black Velcoy R Rarity, super, super simple to buy. Jirak Protops as well. A normal Blue Eyes White Dragon, that's just a starter card for having Kaiba. Jurassic World, that's an SR Rarity ticket. Again, uh, the Banner of Courage, the Stop Defense, both are in the uh, starter decks for Yugi and Kaiba. And then you get Survival of the Fittest. You get that with SR Rarity tickets as well. So this is an extremely cheap deck you can get. And then as you put, continue playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, uh, if you're being a little, if you're still not sure what deck you want to necessarily get, and you don't want to spend any of your actual Actual resources, your gems, your money, your UR, SR dream tickets. You can also upgrade this deck with things like uh, Survival's End or Enemy Controller. Uh, which are two very, very fantastic cards you can get with uh, rank tickets and login reward tickets, which are still extremely, extremely common. And you can drop the non, the non dino portion. So the blue eyes, the stargazer, time gazer. Of course, these are none of these cards you'll use in an actual ranked mode, right? All these cards are just things you're going to be using in basic, basic, basic Yu Gi Oh! Uh, you can drop those for things like survival's end, which is a fantastic dinosaur specific trap card, or enemy controller, which is generic good, um, Bell card but my personal recommendation and for the purposes of this guide is you get this deck you play day one so you can figure out if you like Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links or not so you can uninstall it or reinstall it and then once you've committed to playing the game that is when I recommend you either go into one of two paths remember towards the end of the video I'll tell you some other decks but for the purposes of this guide one of two paths you'll either decide to go into Harpies or you're gonna decide to go into Gaia and I'm gonna explain both of them here all right, so this is the portion of the guide where I start talking about the guides. Um, if you are a player that's willing to spend a little bit of money in this game, uh, this game is the best way to play it is if you're willing to spend at least at the very start, at the very beginning, spend at least $20 in the beginning so you can save all of your gems and resources to get uh, other potential good cards with. Um, but if you're going the complete free-to-play route, uh, you could right away invest your starter gems into the deck uh, that I would recommend, Harpy Ladies, and that's what this section of the guide will kind of go over. Um, now, if you're a player that would that actually doesn't mind spending a little bit of cash and getting 
getting that jump start uh, ahead of everybody, then I would skip ahead to the Gaia section as all this is kind of irrelevant to you. This is specifically for those free to play players that do not want to spend a single dime on the game. You could do it this way instead uh, and still be competitive. Now, before I talk about this, th this is the deck if you're just looking to, if you know what the cards are and you're just looking for a sample deck as a new player, what you, should you get right away? This is what I would recommend right off the bat as you should aim for, uh, but we're going to talk about it kind of more in depth as we get into it. Uh, starting off, first thing I want to get into is the actual core of this deck. Uh, that was the full built the deck. You're not going to have that when you first start this game. This is kind of what you're going to want to go for. Uh, if you're going for that harpy route, uh, so uh, all of this pretty much comes from one mini box minus the swallow's nest. Uh, all of these harpies, if you click on them and then click on how to obtain, it'll take you to the mini box that you can get them through. Uh, mini boxes are really nice because they are half the size of a main box. Um, and there's only one copy of SR, one copy of UR per, so it's easy to reset once you get these. Um, with Harpy specifically, you want to make sure you hit these SRs, so the Channeler and the Perfumer, you need these at three copies, while the Cyber Slash Harpy Lady really only need two uh, of these to really be successful with the deck. So really, you're just looking at maximizing these. Once you pull both a Perfumer and a Channeler, uh, you can go ahead and just fully reset this box uh, and kind of get away. Uh, from trying to spend too much on it. If you if you early pull Cyber Slash, that's fine. Uh, but if you like, for example, on your first pull through, you pull both of these, and then you don't necessarily get Cyber Slash, you can. F it's fine. You still have to go through and get two more of each, so you can get Cyber Slash later down the road. Uh, me personally, I would not recommend playing Harpies until you fully have completed this setup. This is when it starts feeling like a complete deck, um, and then the last four slots for your deck, uh, you can easily put in. Um, other cards that you farmed or any any of those free to play uh, staples cards uh, that we that I mentioned earlier you can kind of put them in here if you truly truly want um, and then make sure to grab the swallows nest swallows nest is not in such a great box it's in the aerial assault box um, which is the old Blackwing box. There's not really much in here unless you're going for things like Purgatrio and stuff like that. It's not currently on the 50% uh, gym sale. Uh, so you could sync both your SR Dream Tickets and then play this deck with only uh, two Swallow's Nest and then later on get the third one. Uh, if that's something that you've kind of put yourself in a jam with with your gym gains, you could just drop one of the Swallow's Nest for now and then later on um, farm it for the Harpy deck. Now... In terms of optimizing your Harpy deck for, and when I say optimize, this is more for a new player trying to get, you know, do something like hit King of Games. Um, if you go to resources like our Discord or resources like DuelLinksMeta.com, you'll notice a lot of Harpy decks are playing 22, 23 cards, and these are very specific decks, you know, for a tournament scene or very competitive level of, of, of play, essentially, especially with a deck like Harpy Ladies that can um, draw and discard very easily uh, and can draw multiple cards with Harpy's Feather Rest. Uh, ultimately, this is the, 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 the big boy deck that you're going to be aiming for. Uh, going for the cards individually, you've got the Harpy's Oracle. This card is basically free to get. You just get it from um, you get it from the uh, normally from the Tag Duel event, but you can get it uh, from. Um, from uh, the tickets as well, making it super, super simple to get the login reward ticket. I believe the UR ones to obtain these. Play these at two. Uh, very nice card because it lets you float off your um, your Feather Rest or your Elegant Egotist or any Harpy spell. You can grab it from the graveyard. Uh, you want to use My Valentine's Harpy's Hunting Ground. This is another card that can be floated if it gets destroyed. Uh, you do have to farm for this skill, but you will get skill tickets. So same place you went for the UR and SR tickets, you can spend that to get your skill ticket, and you can just get Harpy's Hunting Ground that way. Uh, and this card's amazing, this uh, Harpy Hunting Ground, start of your turn, it appears on your board, uh, and you get to pop a, you mandatory pop a spell trap uh, every time you summon a Harpy Lady, which means if you go first, unfortunately, you're probably gonna have to pop this, um, and that is why Oracle's so good, to help recover that from your graveyard. Um, Next up, you have Channeler. Channeler is super, super amazing uh, because you can discard any Harpy card uh, and then you could special summon a Harpy monster uh, from your deck. 
And this is really relevant because you have cards like Perfumer, which on summon lets you add a spell trap that has Harpy in its name. So the typical combo is you go Channeler, you discard a Harpy card, summon Perfumer. With Perfumer, you add uh, the Elegant Egotist, and Elegant Egotist would then let you summon a Harpy Lady 1. That's the typical combo uh, with this deck. Very straightforward, very simple, very easy to learn Yu-Gi-Oh with. Um, and you'll usually combo that into uh, uh, your Cyber Slash Harpy Lady boss monster. Uh, this is this is pretty much the core of the deck. Uh, when she's on the board, whenever a spell or trap is activated, she can chain to it to bounce a monster, either on your side of the board or their side of the board, back to the hand. Uh, so you can bounce one of their combo pieces, you can bounce one of their boss monsters, you can bounce an oracle, um, to the hand to special summon next turn to uh, to add back another card from the graveyard, etc., etc., etc. Uh, I'm not going to go full in-depth on how to play Harpies, um, because we do have a video on how to play Harpies, so I'll link that in the description. Um, but just keep in mind that that is the core combo, and then in here you have generic Exceed monsters, Malevolent Sin, uh, and the Steel Swarm Roach are in a very, very fantastic box called Photon of Galaxy. You just have to do one sweep through of that. Uh, you can get them both. They're both SRs. Uh, you can also pick up cards like Abyss Dweller, which Harpies can also make. If you don't have the other cards while you're building it, you can just, build, you can just get this instead, uh, and that becomes very, very helpful for you. Uh, you also, we play the uh, Thunder Spark Dragon. This card's very critical because it has non-targeting destruction attached to it, um, but it is in a main box, so don't be too worried about getting it right off the bat, but just make sure that it's on your radar to get uh, because decks like Luna Lights and stuff like that, you, you don't really have it in eight out uh, with it, and you'll have to use things like this to try and out those uh, decks, especially in ranked play where it's all best of one. Uh, moving on, we also have the Corbage, which is a rare, so this is like something you can go grab right away while you're grabbing the uh, the Thunder Spark. You can grab this, it's a rare, super, super easy to get, shouldn't take you too much effort. You might grab the other one on the way, and this is also a rare, the Patriarch, this just helps you in the mirror match. Also in a mini box, uh, also relatively cheap to get, um, not too bad for you. And uh, this will help you because it, it pops monsters with uh, similar names. You can only have one copy of that monster. So if you're in a mirror match, um, you can just go ahead and pop, pop, pop the Harpy Lady. And she can't. they can only summon that one Harpy Lady and can't summon anymore. You basically insta-win the mirror match if you go from there. Um, and then beyond that, Hysteric Party. Uh, this is just a rare that you get in the, in the Harpy box, which is really, really nice. Uh, you discard a card. And you're able to uh, summon as many Harpy Ladies from the graveyard. Great recovery tool for you. And then the Fiendish Chains, I tossed them in here because it's, you know, a uh, very powerful trap card. But this can honestly be any staple card that you want. Uh, right now, if you're watching this video current, there's the 50% gym sale with the Forbidden Chalices. That's also a fantastic choice. So you could very easily take these off and put in Forbidden Chalices if you want. Uh, if you have things like Floodgate or Canadia or stuff like that, those can also be fit in there. Again, like I said, some people can play this deck all the way up to 22 23 cards because of the power of harpies feather rest which let you send back three harpies from your graveyard to draw two cards you're able to play a little bit higher than 20 cards but if you're a new player specifically i highly highly recommend you just chill out at 20 cards before you get too crazy um with anything else um so Basically, as long as you get the core. Oh, and this random Cosmic Cyclone. So the uh, Book of Moon is a very, 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 very often played card in here. But as a new player, you're not going to have access to it unless you're willing to spend money. But that box should be coming soon. And the random Cosmic Cyclone could be, again, another Floodgate, another Chalice. Whatever staple card you have or Dream Ticket card you've been following, um... It could just be that. Uh, the only thing that Harpies does to your dream tickets is it pretty much forces you to get Swallow's Nest. Uh, and again, you can just play two Swallow's Nest until you're able to play uh, your third one by going and digging for it, essentially. But your UR dream tickets, as long as you follow the UR dream guide, you can just toss whatever, you know, Floodgate, Kanadia, whatever you ended up choosing. You can just toss those in here and uh, you'll see massive, massive success with Harpy Ladies. Now, to get to the deck that pretty much has the most bang for your buck in terms of resource spending, it's got to be Gaia the Fierce Knight. Uh, with Harpies, you got to build up your deck. You can't play it right away. Uh, you got to go 
you know, spend some of your UR dream, uh, UR SR dream tickets, etc., etc., etc. Now I want to introduce you to Gaia, which the story is completely different with Gaia. Uh, with Gaia, if you just click on how to obtain here, you can see that the Gaia Rise of Gaia structure deck. Yes, it does cost real money, under twenty dollars if you're in the U.S. Convert it to whatever currency that you are using. Um, is insane, insane value. Take a look at all these cards uh, that come with the box. You can see the Galloping Gaia, Gateway, Soldier, all these, and then look at what a uh, an almost optimized Gaia looks like uh, in the metagame. It's almost every single card. Uh, if you take away my one Book of Moon, my two Cosmics, my Dragon's Mirrors, my Chalices, there you go. That's pretty much the whole the whole thing. And then this is a free card, but we'll take it off for now. The, from the deck, this is this is the whole thing. Uh, so you're you're not missing that many cards to go with. In fact, you don't even need these extra deck monsters down here, the Draco Sack and the Gaia the Thunder Charger. Most of the time, you're only going to use your fusions. If you even look at competitive foot, uh, footage of this deck, you only um, need the fusion cards to really have a successful Gaia deck. Um, and this is why I highly recommend, you know, if if you're able to, spending the $20 to jumpstart your account. Because buying all this up front and then to make like a competitive uh, Gaia deck, you can just go get Forbidden Chalices. You don't even have to use your SR Dream Tickets on this. The, this is currently in the 50% gym sale. And even if it wasn't in the 50% gym sale, it's still in a mini box. Uh, it is in the uh, Servants of Kings mini boxes. So you can toss this bad boy in there, uh, and uh, then you have to... Dragon's Mirror is probably the one you're going to want to to spend your, your dream tickets on. Uh, it is in a the Souls of Resurrection mini box, um, and this is a fantastic card for Gaia. You can play it at one copies, two copies, however many you want. Um, and then you can you can literally toss whatever you have. If you if you have Book of Moons, you don't have to have Book of Moons, but if you do, you could toss those in there. Cosmic Cyclones, MSTs. If you went for the Dream Tickets uh, route from the other video that we have, you could toss those in there. Floodgate Trap Hole can be tossed in here. Canadia can be tossed in here. These spots, besides like the Dragon's Mirror, and then things like the Spiral Spear Strike, which is a free card, you just farm it. Uh, and the um, the Gaia Origin, which is also a farm card, and I'm sorry, the Dark Flare Dragon, which is which is a rank ticket card. Uh, all these are free, essentially, essentially free cards. Uh, they're they're you know Bokuba Dual Reward, Rank Dual Tickets. Those are all essentially free rewards that you can get. Um, all the actual resource spending that you would go to build this deck is extremely extremely cheap if you're willing to put up the $20 upfront cost uh, this deck is very flexible with what you can do like in terms of staples or what you get um, which is really really good because after you choose either of these decks the next thing you're gonna be doing is building up your staple collection uh, with your gems so you know if you don't have floodgate yet eventually you're gonna have to get floodgate because it's a really 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 good card um, so as you get those cards if you know banless were to happen where guy is affected uh, you can still interchange um, into different into different back row and, and generic staples and stuff like that um, and you know again I'm not gonna get too far in depth what Gaia actually does there is a full uh, video guide on how to play Gaia I'll link that down in the description uh, but just the basic combo that you get from the box is super super strong you get the Gaia the magical knight you summon the curse of dragon fire you've got the skill dragon's knight path which can put out your one of or two of I play two but you can just easily play one uh, galloping guy on the board your magical Gaia hits the board and then magical Gaia as long as galloping guy is on the board and magical Gaia is still um, Gaia the Dragon Champion mix it in the battle phase your opponent cannot activate their spell trap or monster effects very very linear deck very very new player friendly um, and honestly if you have the $20 that you're willing to put into the game this is the best way to start your account uh, you don't you don't have to spend any more money on the game <laughs> if you spend it on Gaia and then sp save all your gems from then on you have to you don't have to spend any more money on your games as of right now at least until this deck gets nerfed or changed so after deciding you know if you're gonna go the more free-to-play route or if you're willing to invest a little bit of upfront money and then go free to play from that point uh, at that point it doesn't really matter what you end up doing as the roads kind of converge back into a singular path and that is saving your gems and only spending them on staples 
Now, a staple card, like I said before, is a card that can be used um, in, a mo in, a, in a bunch of different decks. So things like Forbidden Chalice or Floodgate Trap Hole, Fiendish Chain, these decks can go, or these cards can go into several different decks. They're not, it's not Harpies, Fiendish Chain can only be played in Harpies or something like that. Uh, it can be played in numerous, numerous decks. Now, um, what you want to do is start saving these gems that you get for free from the game. You get them for free, you get them for doing events, you do them for hitting King of Games, you get 200 for hitting King of Games, um, and when you hit 9,999, they go into the mailbox. And this is uh, this is whenever you hear us mention um, uh, expiring gems, this is what we're talking about. Your gems that are over that, that cap go into this here mailbox, and you can see that you have an expiration date. Uh, attached to it now the reason that you want to save to max and not just immediately when you have gems go spend it on a staple card is the fear of the ban list or the limited list uh, and other things affecting your deck and getting it nerfed uh, you don't want to be caught in a situation where your deck is about to get murdered because it's just too good it's too free for the game and then Konami decides you know what we're 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 eliminating this deck altogether um, you want to always have a backup plan, and then if a better meta deck comes out, and it's also cheap, so for example, we get another Harpy deck that comes out that's extremely cheap and really, really good, you're, re you're, you're ready to immediately invest and just from the get-go have a very strong deck. So that is why we always recommend people make sure to hit the gym cap, and then once you start getting these expiring gyms, when you approach your expiration date, that's when you can go back and purchase um, a bunch of staple cards, which we'll have an updated video with all the staple cards uh, in the future. We do have an old one on here on this channel, but as of the making of this video, it's not been updated quite yet, uh, but we'll have um, that updated list for you guys in another video, um, and I'll link it down here. If you're watching this in the future, it's probably down in the description already. You can go ahead and check it out now uh, if, you, if you really, really want. Um, but once, yeah, like I said, once you start hitting that cap, you just stick to these decks um, and, and purchase those staple cards. Now, you're going to be tempted to go and purchase other decks. New shiny things will come out, and you're going to be, you know, it's going to be like, man, I really, really want to play that. And when it comes to a factor of fun, you know, especially when you're capped out on gems, if you want to just buy something for fun, that's totally up to you. But just keep in mind that this game, if you want to play it free to play, um, it's very difficult to to just buy whatever you want you kind of have to limit yourself to to be you know to to, to have like a good deck while also being ha like having a healthy account if you want to just play every new thing that comes out that's when you have to start spending money on this game and that's how they kind of get you um it's not really the big meta decks that are their big money pumpers it's it's usually them releasing something for example chronomalies came out at the end of zexel world um, if you watch zexel it's a major archetype major anime archetype it's really really bad in duel links uh and it released at a very awful time, but people still bought it. Um, so it made them a lot of money, even though the deck is not good. Um, if at, at some point you obtain all or most of the staples in this game, and there really isn't much more you can go for, then you can maybe consider getting like new decks that come out with your gems. But that's going to be very, very rare that that happens, especially with the rate that they release cards in this game. Um, so if I were you, I, I, I would not personally be spending my gems on meme decks, as we call them. I would make the decision to spend real money if I'm willing to spend that real money. If you're not willing to spend that real money, then, you know, you're always going to be kind of playing a low number of decks. That's just how your Duel Links life is going to look. And finally, we come to the decks that you could build as a new player as alternative decks if you're not a big fan of Harpies and you don't necessarily want to spend money on Gaia and the Dino deck is just too new friendly for you. These are other decks. Um, I'm not going to go too far into them, but I am going to mention them uh, just because they are easy to obtain, but I, I, I have issues pretty much with all of them. Uh, starting off with Trimids, a lot of people say, oh, Trimids is one of the best uh, new decks you can purchase, and this is true if you're familiar with the deck and familiar with how Duel Links plays, it is a more difficult deck to pilot than Gaia or Harpy. Um, and if I'm being totally honest, it's not that great in the current metagame with all the Harpies running around, uh, kind of setting up a little bit of a counter 
to it. Um, so while this deck is fine, if you know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! already, I, I try not to re recommend it just due to the learning curve uh, that it can provide for people. But if you do want to get into this, uh, Trimids are literally in, 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 in two packs, pretty much. Uh, the whole deck's in one pack, and then the Sphinx, uh, which is the boss monster, that first card you see there, um, is from an old, it, it just his own mini box pack as well so very easy to obtain um pendulum yo Sinju is a very interesting choice you can go into the new box as well as unlocking sawatori uh the reason i don't re really recommend this is if you could just honestly play normal yo Sinju and it's a little bit better this is a little bit more free to play friendly it's a little bit cheaper since you could farm but you still gotta go get the sr uh from the new box and the new box isn't that great uh, as of the October new box, um, so generally speaking, I don't recommend this one too much, but it is an option if that's something you wanted to get. Um, there's also uh, Resonators. Resonators is uh, pretty much all in one mini, especially now that you have to play the Red Nova with their most recent nerf. Uh, it's very, very cheap to build, um, but it is a deck that's been recently nerfed, and we don't know how hard the nerfs are going to be in the long run. Um, but it's, you know, I talked about it in the Dream Ticket video that it might be worth Dream Ticketing for uh, this deck. Um, and then there's Melodious, which is uh, very, very, you know, not too bad to get. Obviously, if you go get all these extra techs like MST and stuff, it's going to start costing up. Uh, only problem with this is it is a deck that's extremely, extremely easy to counter. Uh, so I generally don't uh, recommend this deck for new players, uh, especially you also got to go Zuzu. And there's just a lot of farming involved with this and it's just too many gems um to try and and play uh ritual beast same thing with as um as trimids it's just not new player friendly way too many combos and stuff you got to learn and if you don't know them you're not gonna be playing the deck at a, at a coggable level uh, but they're all available in a mini box if that's something that you're interested in as well. Uh, and then finally, Vindrids. If you guys have watched my other videos, you see that I actually hit King of Games with Vindrids in under a week or so. And I don't recommend people usually getting this deck, even though it's a really easy King of Games, is because you're locked into Rituals and all the cards that you pick up um, end up being, you know, not, not so great, if we'll say that. You know, like Sonic Bird will only help in Ritual decks. It won't help you in other decks. Um, like the, 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 the generic staples that you'll pick up with like floodgate and stuff like that and like harpies and, and other decks like that um but that's pretty much going to be it uh those are that's basically the new the updated new player guide we'll try to update this every month or so especially if there's any changes to the base game uh too long didn't watch buy harpies if you're free to play buy gaia if you're if you're willing to put in the 20 dollars investment up front um and then start saving your gems for staple cards <laughs> that's that's really the big goal um right now everyone's saving for book of moon we should be getting book of moon we thought we'd be getting book of moon last month um but hopefully we're getting book of moon here before the end of the year uh, they do have to eventually release it before they can release their next major selection box card that they want to release um so, you know, if, if you're out of staples or you don't know what to save for, that's a perfect target uh, to wait for that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Leave, uh, leave your feedback down in the comments in our Discord. Join the Discord because I did not give you guys the full guide. There's an actual full written guide that has farm decks and more uh, in-depth things um, for you guys and if you have any specific questions join the discord it's in the description and uh you'll be uh you'll get a message telling you where the new player help section is go to the new player help section and they'll be willing to help you guys with any uh new questions uh that you may have that was not covered into this guide again this was supposed to be more a little bit more uh, uh surface level what do i build what do i do type thing and then you get into the community and you kind of figure out what you want from there uh, thank you guys for watching till next time Take it easy.